Hello, I greet you, and I greet you in the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today, I have three stunning episodes taken from the life of the mother of St. John Bosco, whose name was Margarita, surname Bosco, and maiden surname Okiena. See if you agree with me when I said stunning episodes. One day, while Margarita was at home, she heard two young men in her field who were talking together in an inappropriate way. The field was adjacent to her house. Both these young men were known for their wicked and insolent life. Margarita came out of her house into the field and asked them to stop chatting so rudely in a loud voice. The young men burst out laughing at her and also tried to make fun of her. On seeing that bad behavior, Margarita told them to leave the field because the field was hers. To spite her, the two young men remained where they were and to add insult to injury, they started singing of offensive songs. <clears throat> then Margarita, in a firm voice, told them, Here you are, on my property. The field is mine, and I don't want you here. Here only I decide who enters or otherwise. Nobody else, get out of here. <clears throat> Instead of leaving the field, the two youths went behind the tree and continued to sing songs with rude words. Margarita did not give in. She remained firm in what she wanted. So she called one of her children and told him to go and tell the relatives of those youths what was going on. A little later, the mother of one of the young men came and for the other, his brother arrived. There were a few arguments, but in the end, those two young men left the place. Here we see how Margarita used prudent means to reach her goal. Now I would like to pass to another case, always taken from the life of St. John Bosco's mother, Mamma Margarita. There was a woman named Marta who lived a little far from Becchi. Now, Becchi is an area in the village of Castelnuovo d'Asti. Today it's called Castelnuovo Don Bosco. So this woman lived in the same village of Castelnuovo d'Asti, where St. John Bosco was born and brought up, and where Margarita lived at that time. Now what happened that Marta, known by most people there, welcomed in her house a foreign man, and of course the scandal spread like white fire. This action of hers became one of the topics on which people chatted every day. Of course, there was a scandal because Marta was not married to that man. Margarita courageously took the problem of public scandal on her shoulders and wanted to do something, to do what she could so that the scandal would come to an end. Therefore, one day in the evening, she went to speak to this woman, called Marta. Her son, Giovanni, went with her, but didn't get to Marta's house. He stayed a little further away, hidden behind a tree, to see what was going to happen. 
Margarita knocked on the door and called out to her, Marta, Marta. A little later, Marta opened the door a little to see who was there. She opened the door a bit so that no one could see what was inside. When she saw Margarita, whom she knew well, Marta greeted her by name and said, Oh, Margarita, Margarita. And Margarita answered her, Yes, Marta, I'm Margarita. I came to talk to you, if it doesn't matter for you. And Marta quickly answered her, Not at all. We can chat together. And Margarita prudently, but lovingly, said to her, You had better come outside so that I don't need to shout and people will hear me. And Marta went out and the two walked together to the corner of this house. In a low voice, Margarita asked her, You are Marta, daughter of so-and-so and sister of so-and-so. And Marta answered her, Yes, yes, you are right, so you know me well. And Margarita asked her, Are you a Christian? And Marta, what kind of question is this? And Margarita continued asking, Are you baptized? And Marta replied, But why are you asking me these questions? And Margarita asked her again, Do you go to church? And Marta answered her, Yes, yes, of course. Margarita again, and do you receive Holy Communion as well? And Marta, of course. Here Margarita told her, you, you, understand me well when I'm telling you, you, you want to go to hell, you who have been my friend until now. There and then Marta understood perfectly well why Margarita has asked her, all those questions and hesitantly told her but but you know very well my position how poor it is no one should be surprised if I sleep in my house with a foreign man and Margarita immediately replied your position should be not to go to hell and Marta continued I don't know what to do. And Margarita, sweetly but firmly, said to her, Send that man away. And here Martha responded, Now it's dark, and it's not good to send people out at this time. And Margarita zealously told her, You can, yes, you can. You can send him out right now. If you don't know how, I will tell you, and I will help you too, to do it. And immediately, Margarita went in front of the main door of Martha's house, and with a loud voice that was understandable by whoever was in that house, she started shouting, Get out of here! Get out of here! Servant of the devil! Get out, get out, get out. And since it was already dark in the evening and the neighbors heard Margarita's voice and realized why Margarita was there, they took to the street and stayed together there, a little far from Martha's house, chatting together on what was happening. Suddenly, that man ran out of the house and in the blink of an eye, he was not seen anymore in those surroundings. As he left, Marta thanked Margarita for the help she gave her. Today's third episode is the following. In those parts where Margarita was living, there was a man named Lorenzo. Lorenzo in English would be Lawrence. Now, this Lorenzo had a sinful woman 
in his house. Everyone knew why that woman left her home and went to live with that man. It turned out that Lorenzo got seriously ill and was dying. As she learned about his bad health situation, Margarita went to see him because she knew him and he knew her. When she was at his house, of course, she also met with that woman. On meeting her, Margarita told her sweetly and prudently to leave that house because Lorenzo's house was not the place where she should be living for Lorenzo was not her husband but that woman was too stubborn and told her that she would remain there and she would not go out of that house. Margarita tried to reason things out with her, but it was to no avail. Meanwhile, Lorenzo's health got worse and worse, to the extent that someone went for a priest. The parish church was far from Lorenzo's house, and in the church there was the vice parish priest, Don Campora. The priest left everything he was doing and went straight to that man who was dying to hear his confession, administer the sacrament of the anointing of the sick and give him Holy Communion. When Margarita got to know that a priest was on his way there in that house to administer the sacraments to Lorenzo, she was upset about the spiritual state of Lorenzo who was keeping a woman not married to in his house and about the public scandal he was giving while thinking also of the judgment Lorenzo would soon face before God. So Margarita was thinking out on how to prevent Lorenzo from receiving the sacraments. When the priest arrived and placed the Eucharist on a small round table next to Lorenzo, with all due respect, she approached the priest and told him that she wanted to talk to him privately before he administered any sacrament to Lorenzo. The priest agreed to talk to her, so they left the bedroom where Lorenzo was lying, entered another room, told a couple of people to leave that room and closed the door so that no one would hear their conversation. Then Margarita said to the priest, I would like you to know that there is a woman living in this house who is not Lorenzo's wife and her presence here is causing a public scandal to all the neighbors. The priest asked her, who are you please? And Margarita answered him, with due respect, it's not important for you to know who I am. I am telling you how the situation in this house stands, because you know very well that it is not prudent to give the sacraments to one who is living with another woman who is not his wife and who is giving a public scandal to others while that woman is still living here. I tried to persuade her to leave, but she didn't want to. And the priest said to her, but are you sure of what you are telling me? And Margarita said to him, you can call her, talk to her and you will see for yourself if what I'm telling you is true. The priest did as Margarita told him. He called that woman and that woman came. The priest started talking to her to see why she was there when she was not Lorenzo's wife. The woman tried to deny at first the real situation and told him that bad tongues of some people were spreading rumors against her and against Lorenzo. She was there for some good purpose 
and that you would never mind other body's business. But the priest said to her, you are not answering my questions, please answer me clearly. And the priest again asked her a number of questions. At first, she began to deny again that she was there mainly for sin, but when the priest continued to ask her and also made her some direct questions about the case, she assented that what the people were saying about her and Lorenzo was true, and that Margarita was right in what she had told him about her and about Lorenzo. So the priest told her to leave that house immediately. The stubborn woman told him that she didn't want to, and the priest said to her, how come you don't want to leave this house when you aren't Lorenzo's wife? You ruined Lorenzo in his life, and now you want to ruin his soul in his death too? Do you want to be guilty for his eternal damnation as well? When she heard these words from the priest, the woman agreed to leave the house. The people who were there in the house and had come with the priest to accompany the Holy Eucharist did not hear anything because the dialogue between the priest and the woman was carried out in a very low voice and the people were in another room. The priest had also told that woman, of course, before she left, that if she did not leave the house, he would not give communion to Lorenzo, who was dying, and would take the Eucharist back again to the parish church. The priest could not administer the sacraments to the dying man while accepting to have a woman living with him when she was not his wife, because otherwise the priest's behavior would have caused another public scandal. The priest then entered Lorenzo's bedroom, heard his confession, administered the sacraments of the anointing of the sick, and gave him Holy Communion. Shortly after, Lorenzo passed away. Thus, another soul was saved by Margarita. But the priest, before leaving the house, wanted to know who Margarita was, who had given him a providential warning and who did not want to tell him her name. When the neighbors heard about the case, everyone congratulated Margarita for that great spiritual service she had done. Everyone persuaded themselves more that Margarita was a woman who would do everything possible for her to save souls. It is no wonder that the motto of her son, Saint John Bosco, was Da Miki Animas Cetera Tolle. In Latin means Da Give, Miki to me, give me. Animas, souls, Cetera, what remains, all the remaining. Tolle, remove, take away. Give me souls, take away the rest. May we too work for the good of our soul, and wherever and whenever possible, we work too for the salvation of souls. Thank you for listening. You who are listening, and me, one day in heaven together shall be, always by the power of God's grace.